Today we are riding the brand new Sunrunner all the way from downtown St. Petersburg to St. Pete Beach and back. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. We're Jamie and Skylar, and together we are Explorcation, and we are so excited to finally experience the Sunrunner and take you along for the ride today. The Sunrunner is advertised as a quicker, more efficient, and more convenient way of getting around between downtown St. Pete and St. Pete Beach, and today we're gonna put that to the test. Our day of riding the Sunrunner to St. Pete Beach and back began at the 5th Street South stop, where we were happy to find a very short wait time for our first bus. I can see it coming! Before we catch our first ride, we have to give a big thank you to the PSTA for sponsoring this week's episode and making this video possible. Our first bus pulled up right on time, and we had no trouble finding spots to sit at around 10 a.m. on a Saturday. One of the first things we noticed was that the Sunrunner does stop at every station, regardless of whether anyone is waiting, so there's no need to pull a signal cord like on the other PSTA buses. Just as advertised, we found three interior bike racks and USB ports to charge our phones. We also found the onboard Wi-Fi to be easy to connect to and fast enough to stream your favorite YouTubers. After passing through seven of the 30 Sunrunner stations, it was time to make our first stop of the day. So the first leg of our adventure took around 20 minutes, but we also went through downtown St. Pete, which we would anticipate to be the slowest and most congested area along the Sunrunner track. But we decided to hop off on the 22nd Street stop because if you know us, we love to start our day with coffee. And there's actually a juice and coffee shop that we've been wanting to try out just two blocks away from the stop. Right next to one of our favorite St. Pete murals, and just across the courtyard from Black Crow Coffee, you can find Squeeze Juice Works, and we couldn't wait to try it. Once inside Squeeze Juice Works, you'll quickly find that they offer much more than fresh juice. And while we both do love fresh juice, on this morning we were looking for something a bit more caffeinated. your matcha lemonade and my caramelita latte. It's actually not sweet at all, which I love. So these two drinks couldn't be much different, but they are the perfect balance because this one is really sweet and creamy, and this one is sour and refreshing. And after a great start to the morning, it was time to hop back onto the Sunrunner. So as we were approaching the 22nd Street Sunrunner stop, we saw a bus pulling away. But thankfully it says the next bus is only 6 minutes away, which is much less than the 15 minute intervals that we're told the bus typically runs on. And after 6 minutes on the dot, our next Sunrunner bus arrived and we were back on our route to St. Pete Beach. While it was possible to ride the PSTA bus system from downtown St. Pete to St. Pete Beach prior to the Sunrunner, that route would typically take around 50 minutes. But because it has many less stops and its own lane to drive in, the Sunrunner is advertised to complete the same route in just 35 minutes. So stay tuned to the end of this video where we'll tell you if the Sunrunner really is that much faster. So at our last stop, it was only about six minutes between buses. At this one, it's 17, so it does vary. We haven't seen one that's much over 15 minutes, but obviously they're not gonna be able to be perfect. We got off at 11.56, which is about 18 minutes from the 22nd Street stop. And then how long had we ridden it before that? 19 minutes. So we just arrived on the island after getting on the Sunrunner at the 5th Street stop downtown and riding it all the way to the first stop on St. Pete Beach. That route has taken us through 15 stops, which is halfway through the entire route of 30 stops. Now halfway through the route is supposed to take around 35 minutes and it's taken us about 37 minutes, which I would say is pretty good considering it's a busy Saturday and the Sunrunner's only been up and running for about nine days now. So we 
wanted to hop off at the Boca Ciega stop because it is the closest one to Cory Avenue, and that's the downtown area out here on the island. You'll often find events going on in this area like the one behind me, and it's also where we're going to grab some lunch today. In addition to a variety of Saturday events, such as this art market, Cory Avenue now offers a Sunday farmer's market year-round. So if you miss the Saturday market in downtown St. Pete, this Sunday market is just a short Sunrunner ride away. And while the art show was a nice surprise, the main reason we had stopped by Cory Avenue was to visit Chill Restaurant and Bar. It came as no surprise to find a relaxed vibe at Chill, in addition to a lively atmosphere and a solid Bloody Mary at the bar. And while Skylar sometimes prefers to drink his breakfast, I was much more excited for the food. After a few minutes of browsing the menu, I settled on the spinach, artichoke, and goat cheese crepes, and Skylar opted for a bowl of the lobster bisque. As I'm typically not a fan of goat cheese, I was able to sub it out for brie in my crepe, and the result was absolutely delightful. And we both agreed that this lobster bisque was one of the best that we've tried in St. Pete. Chill Restaurant and Bar is open seven days a week. For menus and hours, visit chillstpeatbeach.com. We just left Chill, which came highly recommended from our friends Soon and Maya, and it did not disappoint as both of our dishes were phenomenal. And even better, Chill has partnered with the Sunrunner, which means that if you are one of the first 500 passengers and received a gold card like we have right here, then you will receive a discount at Chill, as well as the juice place we visited earlier today, plus several of the other spots we'll be visiting in this video. Now, if you're willing and able to walk a few blocks, there is an area out on St. Pete Beach that is often overlooked because it's a couple blocks off of Gulf Boulevard and it's also not close to the main public beach access. Now, we find there's a lot of restaurants, bars, and places to listen to live music out in this area that are a little bit more budget friendly compared to the options on the beach. To find this less touristy area, you'll want to follow Cory Avenue west to Sunset Way. The first restaurant you'll come across is Willie's Burgers and Booze, perhaps our favorite spot in St. Pete Beach to grab a cheap meal and an even cheaper drink. And across the street from Willie's, you'll find a popular oyster spot at the Oyster Shucker. And while this area of St. Pete Beach doesn't have an actual beach, it does offer great waterfront views from Fisherman's Park. If you prefer your waterfront views with a delicious meal or drink, then you can find that next door, as both Woody's and 82 Degrees offer great gulf views. If you need yet another great waterfront dining option, Bowie's Waterfront Bar & Grill is just a couple more blocks up Sunset Way. And right next door, you'll find one of the area's best spots for live music at the Toasted Monkey. Making our way back to our Sunrunner stop, we reach the intersection of Quarry Avenue and Gulf Boulevard. Where just a block away, you'll find the bus stop for the Suncoast Trolley. Once aboard this trolley, you can ride north to Johns Pass, Clearwater Beach, or one of the many amazing beaches in between. Do you love St. Pete Beach and the many other St. Pete area beach towns? If so, please subscribe to our channel, as we have many more beach episodes that you can watch today, plus a whole lot more yet to come. While we made our way towards our next stop of the day, we have to mention what we consider to be one of the Sunrunner's best features, its ease of access. The raised entrance platforms, combined with the low floor buses, make for easy boarding for all. And once boarded, those in wheelchairs will also find wheelchair restraint systems on each bus. So our second stop here on St. Pete Beach is at 55th Avenue, which is located right next to the Trade Winds Resort, and also next to the Beach Zone, where you can pick up some beach gear, such as Jamie's Hat. It's also located next to Caddy's, which is another gold card partner. And since it's starting to get hot out and I'm getting a little bit thirsty, that's where we're heading to next before we hit the beach. Not to be confused with Caddy's on the Beach in Treasure Island, Caddy St. Pete Beach lies just to the south on Boca Ciega Bay. Here, visitors can find the same laid-back beach vibe that they can find at each of the other six Caddy's locations. And at the bar, we found exactly what we were looking for in this ice-cold summer shandy and nojito. Now that we've cooled down with some refreshing drinks at Caddy's, we're going to show you how to access the beach from the 55th Avenue stop. While it's a bit hard to find, you'll only have to walk around a block to the south to reach the closest public beach access on the north edge of the Serrata Beach Resort. And if you're visiting on a warm Florida day like we were, you won't be able to get out to the beach fast enough. 
By the time we finally made it to our first beach stop of the day, we only had a couple hours of daylight left. But since the Sunrunner runs until midnight seven days a week, we'd be in no rush to start heading back home. Now if you're at all interested in having some food or drinks on the beach, you are in the perfect spot because you can head just a little bit north and go to Salty's, Postcard Inn, or Jimmy B's. And you can also head a little bit south to go to Rum Runners and Bongos. Now if you're interested in going to all five of those places, that's all right because another great thing about the Sun Runner is you don't have to worry about having a DD or paying for an Uber. Would you consider riding the Sun Runner between St. Pete and St. Pete Beach? If so, let us know in the comments. And if you've already ridden the Sun Runner, please let us know about your experience. Now that we've shown you the beach out of the 55th Avenue stop, we've got just one more stop to take it out on the island. So up until 8 p.m. at night, the average wait time between buses is supposed to be around 15 minutes. Now we have seen that wait time be as high as around 20 minutes, which unfortunately is how long we're going to have to wait for our next bus right now. All right, so quick update. It did initially say 20 minutes, but we've only been here around three minutes and it's already down to a 10 minute wait time. So it looks like we're going to end up waiting less than 15 minutes once again. And after around 13 minutes of total wait time, our bus had arrived and we were off to our next beach destination, just one quick stop away. Our next beach stop of the day took us to the St. Pete Beach Public Beach Access, located at 4700 Gulf Boulevard. By the time we reached this stop, it was around 6 p.m., which meant that the buses would still be running on 15 minute intervals for another two hours. Those who wish to ride the Sun Runner later at night can do so up until midnight, but the average wait time between buses does increase to 30 minutes after 8 p.m. Thankfully, you can track your next Sun Runner arrival from the beach or nearly anywhere else by using the Transit app on your mobile device. We made it to the public beach access on St. Pete Beach, which is our final stop on the island. And even though we're already eight hours into our day of riding the Sun Runner, we've only spent 45 minutes on the actual bus, which means we've had a lot of time left over to enjoy the island. While we enjoy some relaxation on the beach, we do want to once again thank the Pinellas Suncoast Transit Authority, not only for sponsoring this video, but for also providing us with a quick and inexpensive means of accessing St. Pete Beach, which we plan on using for years to come. Now before we catch the Sunrunner back to downtown St. Pete, we do want to talk about the cost of riding. Now currently the Sunrunner is absolutely free and will continue to be up through the first six months of operations. Now just parking out here on St. Pete Beach is $360 per hour. So five hours of parking here on the beach would be $18. Not to mention the cost of gas driving from downtown to St. Pete Beach and back or the hassle of trying to find a parking spot out here on a weekend. So even after the free period is over and the Sun Runner rate goes to the normal PSTA rate, which is currently a maximum of $5 per person per day, it will still save us a lot of money and hassle. Now while we're walking back to the bus stop, I wanted to point out that it's actually across the street from the Dolphin Plaza, which we have taken a fishing tour out of there, and we've also visited a few restaurants in that area, so we'll make sure to put links to those videos in the description below. And that bus stop is also right next to Flippers, which is one of our favorite beach bars and one of our favorite spots to grab some drinks and dinner at sunset. With the sun quickly setting and our next bus approaching, it was time to begin making our way back to downtown St. Pete. And while we enjoy the bus ride back, we want to once again remind you that the Sun Runner will be free into March of 2023. So we urge you all to give it a free test run for yourselves. And if you're watching this video after March of 2023, you still won't have to worry about having cash to ride the Sun Runner, as fares can be purchased and applied via the Flamingo Fares app, which can be downloaded to your mobile device. We are back in downtown St. Pete where we started our day this morning, which means we completed the entire Sun Runner loop. Now we do want to share more about our overall experience, but we are really hungry, so we're going to meet you at our last spot, which is also a Gold Pass partner. Our appetite for food and beer took us to St. Pete Brewing on this Saturday night before Halloween. 
and while we soon found we'd arrived too late to order food, there was no shortage of delicious beers to choose from. And we chose two of our favorites in the Scottish Ale and the Pumpkin Ale on Nitro. So after a day on the Sunrunner, we got our beers and we're ready to give you the recap. It took us a total of 74 minutes to ride the entire Sunrunner loop. And that is 37 minutes average one way, which is just slightly more than the 35 minutes that they advertise from the beach to the burn. Now we did ride on a Saturday, which would be one of the busier times to visit St. Pete Beach. So if you rode during the week, it's possible that it could be even a little faster. Yeah, and overall our experience on the Sunrunner was everything it was advertised to be. It was quick, easily accessible, and budget friendly, and just a really smooth overall experience. Now several months ago we also rode the Suncoast Trolley. Now that experience didn't go quite as smoothly, but it's still a really good budget friendly option to get around on the beaches. So to see that experience, click here right now. Thanks for watching!